Good morning. My name is John with the Pine Tree. I have the great pleasure of being here with Gay Cowan. And thank you very much. For, Hi there. And um, as many of you know, she is one of the, I guess, the founders. <laughs> no, of, of the whole wine industry here, or one of uh, in the whole area. And we wanted to these little pieces. We wanted to try to is to get acquainted with some of the, the business leaders in the area and learn a little bit more about the background. And uh, thank you. For you're, you're very welcome. And, I'm delighted uh, to be here. <laughs> in your own facility. <laughs> in my own facility. <laughs> <laughs> See, we just invaded their tasting room, and now we act like we own it. Which but is it's not, better to be yeah. seen than not seen. So yeah, that's well, what I'm delighted you. to be Well, how, how did you get into this industry? How, this you know? is really unfair. It's kind of like, um, have you got about five hours to oh, go? Oh, sure, yeah. This? Well, it takes about 90 minutes. About 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think it'll take that long. But to make a really long story short, um, a, a portion of my mother's family had been in ranching um, right. for a number of generations. They were Italian from northern Italy. Their name was Cotonio, came over from Italy. Uh, they changed their name to Chatham, mm -hmm. C-H-A-T-O-M, and landed in the Central Valley. Okay. So landed in Turlock and the Tulare area. Same person. Okay. And uh, which was in, in the 1800s was about 15,000 acres. Real small. I mean, oh, not yeah, much very at small. Yeah, not much yeah. at all. And, yeah. and it, it, <laughs> if anyone knows Turlock, it's it's pretty flat. So was my grandmother, when I was a little girl, as far as the eye could oh, see. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, they had cattle. They had uh, corn and and different row crops. Sure. And then in the Tulare area, it was cotton and safflower, and that ranch was about 6,000 acres. Over time, because my great great grandfather, I believe it was, was a gambler, um, as I knew the ranch was growing up, the Turlock Ranch ended up being about six to eight hundred acres, and the Tulare Ranch ended up being about two to three thousand acres. So um, there was, I guess, more not not money exchange, but land exchange <laughs> yeah. when you gambled way back when. But in some ways, that was kind of. I mean, that was a great time to be in the Central Valley because that was when, you know, it, were, it, it was the bread basket. I mean, it still is, but it's changing, but I mean, it was... Well, well Turlock is, is definitely like, not not what it used no, to be. No, not at but, all, no. Um, so in the late, in the late 70s, I was, I was born and raised in San Francisco. Uh, we had the opportunity... You're quite the city girl, so that's, you know, right? <laughs> well, I've been up here for 27 years now, so not so, still not so okay, city all anymore. Right. Um, we had the opportunity to expand on the ranching and mm -hmm. farming interests, and I had a, uh, a ranch consultant who had been with our family for a number of years by the name of Eldred Lane, mm -hmm. and he was familiar with uh, the Mountain Ranch area and Calaveras County, and made the suggestion of us looking at properties here right. and diversifying. And so we looked, we started to look here, I was introduced to Bart Stevenow, who had Stephen O. Winery, and um, it, it sort of evolved into I would be purchasing a piece of property, planting vineyard, mm -hmm. selling the fruit to Barden under contract, and the rest just sort of fell into place. So it was the old Davis Higgins Ranch that, and a number of other people that had owned it, you mm -hmm. know, as, as time they'd gone through. Um, it's located out in the beautiful Esmeralda Valley. And it's about a thousand acres today. When wow. we purchased it, it was um, probably six to seven hundred acres. Wow! So you've added on to it. We've added on to it. Just there were there were little mining claims, old yeah. mining claims yeah. and things. And the property itself, the valley itself, is plant was plantable. So today we have sixty four acres of fruit. Okay. I started planting the vineyard in eighty one, um, and did it, planted it in three different phases. Sure. So. Uh, the initial interest was to sell all the fruit in somewhere in, uh, I'm trying to make this story shorter than you know, five <laughs> yeah. hours long. Um, yeah. So I had no interest in building a winery, none at all. I mean, that was not, that was not my forte. Well, right. and I had to learn about how to put the right end of the grape, the, the plant into the ground. Sure. So I went back to Davis. I didn't need another degree. Um, I had enough to get me started, and they were none of them were in agriculture. Um, I left my computer job, moved up here, and lock, stock, and barrel, and I, I haven't left. Very nice. So, in '85, um, this Stephen O. Winery group could not mm -hmm. take our Sauvignon Blanc, and that's when we started a custom crush scenario. 
So it's basically out of necessity. Almost. Out of it's necessity. Well, that was also the year that Gallo dumped about 250 to 300,000 gallons of white in the okay. marketplace. And, uh, All right. So push came to shove. That's when the Chatham label was started in 1985. So from 85 till 1990, I used custom crush um, operations. Okay. And in 1990, I started this venture. And so with the vineyard being out on Esmeralda Road, right. um, we have about 14 varietals of, of grapes, mm -hmm. um, all hand cultivated. Um, my foreman and assistant foreman have been with me for 27 years. That says a lot. That says a David lot. Basham and Larry Rush, they're absolutely hysterical. I love them to death. <laughs> like, it's just old family out there. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, yeah, I have been known to be the grandmother of the wineries and the vineyards, but, uh, but I, only, yeah. only because I... She said I, it on camera. I, I didn't say <laughs> it. I, I didn't... <laughs> only because I've been here that long. Not because of my age. I look really good for 95. Yes, you do. Um, <laughs> I had to say it because I knew that somebody else would. If I yeah. Um, at any rate, they've been with me since the inception, right. and when I started the... This location, the winery location, which is on, on Highway 4 in Douglas Flat, that was in 1990 we opened, so the tasting room, the offices, and the first portion of the cellar opened up then. Now, when, in, say from when you were starting, was it basically you and Stephen O? Was that, who else was uh, here? Actually, in, 80, in the early 80s, Barton was making wine. Um, Black Sheep had bought from That's Chispa right. Cellars. Okay. Um, then we had Millier okay. coming in, and then it, I was still doing the Custom Crush. Ironstone opened up their winery about the same time that we did in 1990. Okay. All right. So, and, th and then from then on, it was... Katie, bar the door. Oh, my God. It's, I mean, it, what do we have? 21 or 22 yeah. wineries yeah. today. And this is 2008, so, yeah. and more to come, oh, as yeah. I understand it. Um, As we evolved, though, um, my a portion of my family did not want to stay involved with the agriculture concerns. Okay. So in 1985, uh, we sold the the Turlock Ranch and the Tulare Ranch. Okay. So that if from 85 on, I am the sole owner of uh, the Chatham Vineyards up here. Uh, people come up from Turlock and and still the school is still there. The mm -hmm. Chatham School is still mm -hmm. there because. Um, um, a number of our relatives have been teachers down mm -hmm. in that neck of the woods, so I, it's it's really kind of fun to have people coming up from sure. Sherlock and saying, "Are you related?" At all? And, <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah. You know, that's old family. And then the um, the Tulare Ranch is no longer, you know, in Chatham. That sure. was sold off to the J. G. Boswell Company. Okay. So. Uh, since '85 on, you know, it's it's wow. basically I'm I'm it. I my oldest son's name is Chatham. I kept that family name going. Um, my second son's name is Mike. I have a Sam is my youngest son, and Georgina is my youngest daughter. And my husband George does not does not partake in the winery <laughs> unless we really need him to schlep sure. wine sure. back and forth or something. But George is George is a school teacher, so. He'd rather have that profession, He'd rather have that profession than my profession. profession. But I did see him carrying a case or two around, you know, doing some PR work, I think, up at Bear. Yeah, yes. I think that was. <laughs> he does. He does deliveries. <laughs> we forget the BOLs every now and then, but the bills of lading. No, oh, he's great. He helps out. He helps out when we need help. Yeah. And this, when we opened this in 1990, um, Diane Hewlett, who runs our tasting room, has been here since 1990. Wow. Uh, we've had a, a couple of changes over the years. I think Margo is, is the next seasoned um, tasting room aficionado. Uh, and then I, I've got a wonderful crew. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's you know, the ladies that I have in the office. We're more known as the female winery. Yes, we haven't got to the she wine. No, we so, haven't yeah, gotten yeah. to that yet. But <laughs> right, I mean, right now, we. It, most of the people that work here at the winery are, are women. Mm -hmm. um, our winemaker Mark came on with us in the fall of, of 2004, and, and you've welcomed him. We, that, yes, we did. Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we did. He, he tip, tiptoed in. He didn't. You know. No, actually, he didn't have to tiptoe. Okay, he just, all right. um, I may be sort of going too fast. He has been an incredible addition, you know, and um, just the quality and the care and the artistry 
and the handcrafting that he has brought to the uh, brought to our table has yeah. just been really amazing. You know, so delightful man to be working with. And I don't consider myself. It, you know, really, I am the superior in the sense that I have to sign the check. Sure. But I mean, really, all of us work together as a team. Yeah. It's not who's on first and what's on second. And one of the things I want to say, I've been impressed, is you do a lot of your outbound marketing yourself, don't you? I mean, a lot of the, the, oh. the you know, the, no, I mean, as far as uh, working with your distributors and brokers and stuff, I mean, I, um, you know, it's it's impressive to see. I mean, you travel, I mean, you travel a lot, probably more than you would like to, almost. Oh, much more, much more than I'd like to. But that's the nature of the beast. Yeah. Today is, is um, it's a lot more difficult today to place your wine than it was when we started. Right. And, and part of that is um, because there are so many more wineries. Mm -hmm. um, Calaveras County is an up and coming region. Right. Uh, the Sierra Foothills has been a very quiet, um, kind of mysterious, uh, understated region. And it just to prove that it's happening, it's mm -hmm. coming along, it's it, knowing that how many years ago when I started there right. were only a handful of wineries and today we have, we're going on 22. Yeah. Um, the Sierra Foothills themselves goes from the Nevada border, Nevada County border, all the way down to Mariposa. Mm -hmm. And so we have 11 counties in the Sierra Foothills. I, I'm really not sure if El Dorado is larger than Amador. Amador, okay. I, I believe, is larger than the rest of us are. But, okay. you know, we all complement each other. And there's so many more styles of wines today than there were way back when. Right. That it's, um, it's really fabulous what all of us are able to offer. Yeah, when you're on the East Coast or you're something like that, now, is it, do you try to sell the foothills as a block, or just Calaveras County specifically, or does that ever even come into play? I mean, um, I, you know, it, it, for me personally, if I'm doing a tasting, whether it's in San Francisco or New York, mm -hmm. I would, obviously I'm selling my wine, I'm selling the Chatham label, of course. but I'm selling the region. Right. So that it behooves me to take our maps, it behooves me to take, say, the date cards, Sure. I take, um, not just the the Calaveras Wine Association map, mm -hmm. but a regional map, so that people can now I can I can stand at a table, I can look at the person across the table and say, this is where Calaveras County right. is, right. this is how far it is from San Francisco, this mm -hmm. is how far it is from Tahoe, this is how far it is from Sacramento. There they, with looking at that, I would say, 20 years ago. Nobody knew where we were, mm -hmm. and oh, I think I know who you are because of Mark Twain and the sure. German Frog. Sure. Um, and today they know the region. Yes. Yeah. So it's it it works for all of us if we're all marketing a region. Mm -hmm. We can sell our own wine, sure. and, and I have different varietals from another winery, but it makes it more of a partnership if we're out with there the area. with the so, area. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Um, and you can and you guys know you've been. Intimately involved, but can you tell? I mean, it almost seems like now that the the Calaveras County region and including up to um, Western Alpine County, this whole area is, you know, a lot of them business things. They call it the tipping point. You know, it's all of a sudden it's um, it's coming of age, so to speak. Do you see that at all, or is it you know as far as uh, where we're going forward, as far as traffic numbers, as far as tourists and business activity in general? Do you think we're are we tapped out? Well, no, 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 not tap, not tipping okay. point is why I guess I, I probably shouldn't explain it. So there's a couple of things where, you know, things build and build and build, and then all of a sudden they get to a point to where it, it takes it up to that next level, you know, a significant level of growth as far as, uh, as a destination. I think one of the things that, questions we're seeing is that with, from the Bay Area, with Calaveras County as a destination, sometimes it's almost, if you're comparing this to like Lake Tahoe or something like that, mm -hmm. with the traffic on the weekends now, it's becoming where Tahoe's not even really a possibility. It's what I mean, if you want to spend six, seven hours in the car, I mean, here you don't have to do that, right? I mean, right. that's what right. I meant. I mean, right. what I if meant is, I have to spend more than five minutes waiting at the driveway to get out on the road, I, I, I yeah. get annoyed. Yeah, yeah, that hasn't happened yet. Right, but I mean, I think it looks. But if you're talking to enough people, it seems like the next few years. I mean. Even with the incredible growth that we've had, mm -hmm. it seems like that it's becoming now to where Calaveras County 
with the wine, with the combination of the wineries and the other things it has to offer, is becoming just purely a destination in and of itself, oh, which think, should be good I for think. everybody. I, mean, I, is that, I think that um, it it is. Sorry, I got a sidetracked here. Yeah, you did. Uh, yeah, you did. I like seeing the growth that's happening. I like right. seeing the fact that more people are coming to our region for either for golf right. or to visit with the wineries yeah. or to go snow skiing mm -hmm. or visit big trees mm -hmm. or water, you know, rafting or whatever yeah. it is. Um, I would love to see more diversification in, within the region. Does, yes. it, does that make no, sense? Yeah, it does. And, and not that I don't want to see more wineries in Murphy's, mm -hmm. but you know, in order for the county to be successful, it would be great to have more exposure in, in Angel's Camp, mm -hmm. what's going on in McCollum Hill, mm -hmm. um, what's going on, sorry, I didn't mean to leave out San Andreas, um, but it, it, if we're focusing just on one little town, oh, right. no, of it's going to be, it's going to be overkill. Yes. And for the whole county to be successful, we, I think we all need to. It's it's like we're the Calaveras Wine Association. Mm -hmm. So not all the of us, Murphy's Wine Association. Right. Well, but it, yeah, and, <laughs> I, well, I'm not a Murphy. No, so I know I you're not. I, I know. I know. That, I know. I can't say I'm the Murphy's <laughs> Wine Association. Um, it. I would love to see more tasting rooms and wineries come in to be able to spread the, sure. the wealth out within sure. the community itself. Um, I love all the wineries that are in Murphy's. I love them. I mean, they're, they're great. And yeah. all of us complement and work very well together. Oh, I think so. I think that with with more businesses, hopefully there are more businesses coming up to our region. And, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing an increase in in tourism, mm -hmm. you know, the economy right now, it's January 2008, we've, you know, we've got yeah. elections around the corner and all yeah. kinds of things going There's on. There's the R word now and they're in the economy, it's creeping in every little bit. I, I know. Know you. That's, yeah. um, but uh, now that we got sidetracked, we'll give it, now, back <laughs> to your wines, now we'll get back to the, oh, now, we gotta get back to the wines. Okay. <laughs> now I guess um, one of the things that's been, um, like the she wines, tell us a little bit about how that how how that whole. Thing That's a fun goes. package for us. That's a really fun package. Um, in in two thousand three, I no two thousand two, Mari Wells um, mm -hmm. came on with us, and uh, she had done an internship at um, Gloria Ferrer, and so actually I think she came in in two thousand one, and. You know, I'm so old that I don't remember when she came in. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. At any rate, we had it was that's when we it was all female. Mm -hmm. You know, we had female winemaker the whole right. scenario, and we had some. There was some Zinfandel that was brought in that a, a vineyard just couldn't find a home for, and so called us up and said, "Would you take this? You know, we'd, sure. we'd be happy to have you, yeah. you know, utilize this." And so Mari agreed to take it on and. So we're sitting there trying to figure out what to do with the Zinfandel. It was um, about 16% alcohol at the time. And we thought, okay, let's do this kind of fun sure. package. And a portion of the proceeds that we, we did this new label, mm -hmm. um, and we decided that a portion of the proceeds would go to women's right. heart disease research. Right. And without getting involved with the huge companies, you know, the... Um, you know, we decided to, to do the donation to our local chapter mm -hmm. for heart disease research mm -hmm. and women's heart concerns. So we, that's how it started with Mari. So when Mari was leaving in 2004, um, she fell in love, she moved to Grass Valley, she got married, and, and it, well, there was really no way of stopping the, a one-way, right. two-hour Sometimes commute. Sometimes that happens. You can't, just, you can't yeah. stop. <laughs> so um, she introduced Mark to us. And Mark said he would he would agree to continue with the package as long sure. as he didn't have to wear the dress. There you go. Yes, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> it was it, for us it was a no brainer. It's uh, a really fun screw cap. We retail it at about twelve dollars in in the in the marketplace, mm -hmm. and it's been a very successful. And it's built a really nice following. Hasn't yeah, it, it has. Really it has. Built a nice, I mean, uh, one of the things that we did do with with um, Mark Twain St. Joseph's mm -hmm. Hospital. 
um, was work with them for the for the February you know heart disease right. you know type right. of thing and so uh, the the red pin mm -hmm. and all of that and so that that's been a that's been a really fun partnership with us and Mark actually came up with the she white package and we also contribute to um, the breast cancer research right. for right. for the local chapter as well so there's not a lot of inventory of either of the wines. The blend for for both of them changes on an annual basis. Um, so the original blend of the she wine was this kind of high octane Zinfandel mm -hmm. with um, some Avril Hau, which is one of our Portuguese varietals. And then the next vintage has been it was Merlot with uh, Cabernet and um, I think it was Cabernet and Zinfandel. And then this. Third round has been a Heinz 57 of Merlot, Zinfandel, Sangiovese, Syrah, or Cabernet, and Tariga Nacional. Mm. So we've had a lot of fun with it, and Sweet. especially with February being, you know, heart right. heart concern, right. um, we're definitely doing a big push for that. So we're having we're having fun with the package, and Mark is doing a great job with it. But it does the blend changes, sure. the philosophy doesn't. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's it's been a fun it's really been a fun venture for us. Now, how many different lines um, make your your product mix? How how is it? I mean, what what's um, how many different lines? Everything that we make is from our own vineyard. Okay. So that um, our annual production is probably somewhere between eighty five hundred and nine thousand cases. Wow. We don't want to produce more than that. Right. Um, we do fill in with um, a little bit of Sangiovese. Uh, uh, and a little bit of Syrah, mm -hmm. you know, but when I'm saying that, it's just a few tons here or a few tons there. We yeah. purchased a little bit of uh, Petite Syrah as well, but for the most part, you know, we're, it you really, found your ditch, every, like it. everything yeah. is, it comes from our yeah. own vineyard. We have, um, so in the tasting room, we do have, the, we do have mm -hmm. four whites. We have the Semillon, which is dry. Um, that's out of the tasting room, solely out of the tasting room. And the She White, is solely out of the tasting okay. room. Um, then we have our Chardonnay and our Sauvignon Blanc, which are unoaked, so there's no oak to to those two whites. Those are very successful packages for us, and and two varietals that we've been very successful with from the beginning. Right. So those are wines that have really been mainstays for us. The people, you know, they're familiar they, they, with. That's their, you know, one of your mains. Yeah, yeah. and the and the style of those two wines. Um, it really stays the same, so that it's it's interesting. The Sauvignon Blanc is not a bone dry, grassy, weedy, you know, Sauvignon Blanc. It has a lot of melon melon characteristic to it, and we do blend a little bit of our Semillon into it. And then the Chardonnay is more of a crisp um, apple, you know, delightful, refreshing, you know, Chardonnay. Uh, the Reds, um, we do have a Sangiovese that we call our Gitano, and all the reds are dry. Actually, all of our wines are dry with the exception of the Portuguese variety that we make. So going through the, the lineup, we do have a Sangiovese that we call Gitano. We have a, a red Zinfandel, a Syrah, Cabernet, Merlot. I'm going to forget something. <laughs> we do have an Esmeralda, which is the high end of our Syrah. And then we have Port. So I probably forgot something in the wine. <laughs> It's, um, for the most part, you know, doing 8,500 cases of wine, about a little over a third of it is sold out of the tasting okay. room. About 17 to 18% is through our wine club. Sure. And then the rest of it is through distribution channels throughout the United States. We're in about 10 or 11 states oh, right nice. now. Yeah, nice. it's kind of fun. Uh, but, you know, here it is. It's it, this is the January. That's a lot season. of work too to do those ten or eleven states. Well, yeah, I, yeah. I have, I have, <laughs> um, I have a great, uh, a great gal that works with me in sales uh, on a part-time basis. Sure. And so when she's in Arizona, I'm in Boston. Mm -hmm. Or when she's mm -hmm. in Florida, I'm in Connecticut or something right. like that. So right. um, most salespeople don't want to see you in December and early January. That they just. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're recovering, <laughs> and, and so are we, for sure. that matter. And so, really, February on. Start the February sales. To, yeah, February yeah. till October. It's nonstop. 
Well, thank um, you for doing what you do. I mean, it's uh, oh, I enjoy it's, it's a I wonderful. Enjoy it. It's you're an integral part of this whole community, and I think it's uh, it's nice to it's nice to have seen the whole thing grow and mature. You know, it's uh, it's um, it. It, it certainly isn't what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I mean, it really is a labor of love. I live at the vineyard, and, it, and it, to see the seasons, it's just mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is awesome. And to think that I've been there since 1980, it, it just doesn't make sense that that much time has passed. Um, now, I know your kids are spread all over the world, but I mean, are they, do you think any of them will come back and join you in the business? Absolutely side? not. No, they're, they're not going <laughs> to, not at all. Huh? All right. I don't think so. Um, I, I think that, uh, not that they don't want to work. Mm -hmm. I think if they were a little bit mm -hmm. older, mm -hmm. if they were older, it might be something different. But for right now, I, I didn't start this for them. <laughs> oh, I, know? yeah. But, and if they, um, if they so choose to come into it, I, I'd love it. I, yeah. My oldest did. They've all helped in one way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. whether it's been at Harvest or right. um, helping right. with, you know, marketing or, or yeah. something. But I don't see today. I don't see them them doing that. I think they all have their own interests. Their own little niche, which, yeah. is, which is good. But, well, thank you. thank you for spending the time oh, with us. Yeah, we really appreciate it. And uh, and come on in to Chatham. And it's right along Highway Four. In Douglas Flat. In Douglas Flat. Du not Murphy's. It's Douglas Flat. So. It's, it's okay. We're just we're just west of Murphy's. We're a mile yeah. and a half west of Murphy's. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Oh my God, that's just going to be hysterical.